let's get to the top half of the synopsis of the NFL brain trusts and the roster resets based on the Sterling net point power rankings. And again, ladies and gentlemen, remember to push the subscribe button and to click on the notification bell so that you'll know when we put out some of this good football information. So let's get ready to kick this thing off. Our first team is the Los Angeles Chargers. Now the Chargers, Benny, um, were plus 15 in net points. I believe they came in 16. So we're going 16 to one now. So they would have been 16th in net points uh, for last season's regular season. Their brain trust includes general manager Tom Telesco, head coach Brandon Staley, OC Joe Lombardi, DC Ronaldo Hill, special teams coordinator Ryan Ficken, and quarterback Justin Herbert. So, you know, this is an interesting group. Brandon Staley has already sort of distinguished himself as someone who's going to go for it on fourth down and take some chances and follow some of the analytics, man. But he's got he's got an absolute beast at quarterback who can do pretty much everything. And he's so young. He came out, came out smoking, you know, out of the clear blue sky. And he hasn't really slowed down yet. So I guess my questions are going to really be about this OCDC special teams, these guys in here. What do you got on this? Well, we'll take it from the top and we'll talk about the GM first and run it on down as I'm going to do for every team. I'm going to uh, go through their brain trust, being the GM, the OC, the DC, and in some instances, the quarterback, and give you some background on them and their careers and some resume type information on each guy. So we'll start with the Los Angeles Chargers. Their GM is Tom Telesco. He's got 31 years as an NFL executive serving as a scout for the Panthers and the Colts. He was director of scouting and play personnel for the Colts and GM for the Chargers. He's been the GM for the Chargers since 2013. So he's been around. He has a lot to do with the way this team is shaped right now. The head coach who you just spoke of is Brandon Staley. He has six years of NFL coaching experience, almost all of it on the defensive side of the ball, which is not a bad thing. That's a good thing. Uh, he's been a position coach for the Bears and the Broncos, and he's been a, dec uh, a defensive coordinator once before for the Rams uh, before becoming the head coach of the Chargers. His offensive coordinator is Joe Lombardi. Joe Lombardi shares some coaching bloodlines. He's the grandson of the great Vince Lombardi of the old Green Bay Packers. He's got 16 years of NFL coaching experience serving as a defensive assistant with the Falcons and an offensive assistant uh, also with the Falcons. Now that's, that's a little different. Most coaches come in and kind of get locked in on one side of the ball or the other. This guy has experience on both sides of the ball. Uh, he's been a co quarterback coach with the Saints and he was an offensive coordinator for one season with the Lions, and, with the Lions back in 2014. Uh, he became the Chargers OC just last season, 2021. Their defensive coordinator is Ronaldo Hill. Ronaldo Hill has a 10-year career as a player to lean on. He was a cornerback with the Cardinals, the Raiders, the Dolphins, and the Broncos. 10-year career in the NFL is pretty nice. He's seen a lot. He was a DB coach with the University of Wyoming and the University of Pittsburgh. Those are two D1 schools before he became a DB coach for the Dolphins and started his NFL coaching career. Uh, he was also a DB coach for the Broncos between 2018 and 2020. Uh, that was with the Dolphins and the Broncos between 2018 and 2020. And he became the Chargers DC just last season. And of course, the starting quarterback for the Chargers is Justin Herbert, a fine young quarterback, one of my favorite quarterbacks to watch and uh, in a very tough division is going to make some noise, I'm sure. Uh, you, you said it right about being in a tough division. In order to deal with that 
tough division, they're going to have to uh, have a little bit of a roster reset. Okay, when we talk about roster reset right now, what we're mainly talking about, key additions, either through free agency or key losses, also possibly through free agency. Oh, and some of the additions could be re-signing of current players. So when we look at the charges, we see uh, Khalil Mack obviously is a big addition as the top flight edge rusher in the league. J.C. Jackson also is a key addition, a top flight cornerback. How they got him away from the Patriots, I have no idea. And they also re-signed wide receiver Mike Williams, who had a career year last season. Their biggest losses aren't really that big, in my opinion. Uh, Brian Balaga, an offensive tackle, and Linville, Linville Joseph, a defensive tackle, are probably the most important guys, uh, good players still, that they lost. Um, let's look at the draft here real quick. Uh, they didn't have a great draft. Although they did pick up Zion Johnson from Boston College. He was among the top guards in the draft coming out and they got him because obviously uh, taking care of Mr. Herbert is very important. So they added Zion Johnson to the offensive line. Uh, JT Woods is a decent safety coming out of Baylor. In the fourth round, and you won't hear me talk too much about anybody past the third round in the draft, but I found this guy to be kind of interesting. Isaiah Spiller is a running back out of Texas A&M. He's possibly a steal all the way deep into the fourth round because he was the brother of a former Saints running back by the name of C.J. Spiller that some of you guys might remember. We got some bloodlines going there. You know how I feel about bloodlines. So we'll keep an eye out for Isaiah Spiller. All right. 